or something is to give light, it must endear burning. If something or someone is to give light, they must endear burning. If something or someone is to give light, they must endear burning. I'm not going to ask permission today to be vulnerable because I believe that there's a unique power in vulnerability. I believe that vulnerability is the only accurate measurement that we have for courage. And I'm ready to be courageous. We always talk about connection and connecting with other people and connecting with the world around us and connecting with our patients. But how can one possibly connect with the world around them if they're not connected to themselves? Ask yourself. Is it easy to focus your attention on the external than it is to go inward on your thoughts, on your experiences, on your existence of pure consciousness? Are you capable of stripping the layers of all the doubt, the pity, the negativity, all the worries, the fears in your life, everything bullshit blocking you from being who you want to be so you can express 100% of unconditional love. We always talk about love in chiropractic and loving our patients and loving the people around us. But how can one possibly fully love themselves? How can one possibly fully love another if they don't fully love themselves? I think this thing that we're in chiropractic is way deeper than just physically moving a bone. I think it's about shifting human consciousness. But how can one possibly shift human consciousness if their own consciousness is not shifted? April 28th, 2010. Most of you guys in here know me and know the date. It's the day when I got into a near-death fatal car accident where the doctor depicted me to death. And during this time, I felt pity for myself. I felt sorry for myself. I felt worthless. I felt like everything that I did didn't matter for nothing. In the hospital bed laying there, I couldn't even make myself go to the bathroom. I needed help. And every day I woke up and asked myself, why me? Why me? Why me? April 28, 2011, April 28, 2012, I drink. I drink. I drink till I feel no pain. I drink with intentions to not hear me think. I drink with intentions to not wake up. I drink with intentions of suicide. How can one possibly serve another person with that disconnected side of them? How present was I at that moment? Now the question is, how present are you at this moment? We always talk about doing something to someone. But there's an absence of connection. Where is the connection? Because is it about doing something to someone or is it about doing something with someone? Because the more connected you are to yourself, the easier it is to connect with another soul. So I want everyone to close their eyes right now. And while we're all sharing this space together, I want you to, I want you to think about who are you? Ask the question, who are you? And before you answer the question, I don't want you to have an answer with your name, with your occupation, with your degree, things that you've done in the past, or your beliefs. Who are you? I ponder around this question for some time now, and I realize that I'm absolutely nothingness. But nothingness is somehow synonymous with every single Thing. This, the Dalai Lama talks about, I don't need to go to paradise. Paradise is inside of me. When's the last time you looked inside the paradise inside you? Whatever, whatever bullshit may be going on in your life, when's the last time you looked into the paradise inside you? 
because when all doubt, it is still paradise. You know, this whole concept of looking within is, is not, it's nothing new. We've been doing this since the beginning of time. And I'll never forget uh, when I was in uh, sixth grade and um, we were, it was movie day and we watched the movie The Wizard of Oz. And there was this one scene that always stuck with me throughout my whole life. And it was the scene where it was Dorothy and the Good Witch. And Dorothy, Dorothy says to the Good Witch, she's, uh, she says, I, I need your help. And the Good Witch says, well, you don't need my help anymore. The power you needed has always been inside of you. And then the, the Scarecrow says, well, why didn't you tell her that earlier? And then the Good Witch says, she wouldn't have believed me. She needed to learn for herself. There's no place like home, right? There's no place like home, right? There's no place like home. Where's home? Home is here. Home is where the heart is. And when's the last time you've been inside your home? When's the last time you've seen your home for what it is? When's the last time you went inside your home and saw the broken glass mirrors of, of pity from before and tried to fix it? When's the last time you went inside your home and saw the foggy mirror of, of self-doubt and tried to wipe it down? When's the last time you went inside your home and literally loved it for what it was? Your heart, your home. We always talk about planting seeds in, to people. Oh, I'm gonna talk to this person so I can plant this seed or bring this seed. Let me tell you right now, you have every goddamn seed that you need inside of you. No answers are outside of you. Every single answer that you need is right inside of you. And yes, people can bring awareness to the situation and when in part, water your seed, but you can do that yourself. Because I can heal myself, you can heal yourself, and together we can heal the world. So with that power inside of you guys, and every single one of you guys, with that power inside of every single one of you guys, and with this great ambition to do good, it becomes a moral obligation to do that, to do good. It becomes a moral obligation. And it's not by choice. Not by choice, by responsibility. So I'm asking you guys all here today, are you ready to take that responsibility? Because if you are, get ready. This is a new day. Thank you.